Singapore's parliament has been told good governance and tough laws are what it takes to maintain public order. Home Affairs Minister Keisha Mugam says Singapore balances the need for public order with freedom of speech by allowing protests in a limited space. The minister added that there are lessons to be learned from street protests worldwide and especially those in Hong Kong. Hundreds and thousands of protesters have demonstrated in the streets of Hong Kong since last June. Mr. Shamugam said the Hong Kong police, once considered one of Asia's best, were caught between the need to uphold public order and violent protesters. The relationship between the public and the police was further damaged by the one-sided portrayal in the media, particularly the international outlets. Police were criticized for brutality, while protesters were often portrayed positively. When off duty, police had to fend off protesters targeting their families. Morale dropped. One key lesson is the actions of a disaffected few should not be allowed to threaten the rights of the majority to live in a stable, peaceful society. And really, there has to be a zero tolerance approach to illegal demonstrations and protests. We already have the Public Order Act. We take a zero tolerance approach. So it's an offense to organize or participate in a public assembly in Singapore without a police permit. But where Singaporeans want to protest or demonstrate about issues that concern them, that is the speaker's corner. Surveying the global landscape of protests, he spoke of countries who said such demonstrations should be allowed as part of freedom of expression. But they eventually took steps when it came to the crunch. Denmark set up steel cages to hold protesters, while in London, 1,800 people were arrested in one protest. And in Hong Kong, part of the problem was that police couldn't intervene unless a protest turned violent. So by the time you have 50,000 people on the streets and some people go in there, let's say 500 mixed up, who are deliberately intent on creating violence, how do the police handle this? This is, sets up the police for failure and sets up the police to be the fall guys. It's far better to say protests in specific places and uh, otherwise no protests in other places because you really want to strike a balance between competing interests. On the one side is the desire of the protesters to get themselves noticed. On the other side is the disseminity to the rest of the community. Why should one be favored and why should the rest of the community be said just accept it? But tough laws alone aren't enough. He stressed that good governance that delivers to the majority is the most important. If a large majority of your people feel that it's a fair system, they have opportunities, that the government and the system is set up to help the largest majority possible, then people have faith in the system and the people who want to break the laws would be a minority. Then your police can handle it. But if a significant section of your population believes that the system is fundamentally unfair, the socio-economic system and the benefits is fundamentally unfair, and that it is set up to benefit a few at the expense of the majority, at the expense of the many, then no amount of strict policing and strict laws are going to keep people off the streets. Moving on to another issue, Mr. Shanmugam also announced that the police coast guard will be getting new patrol boats to replace its third generation vessels. He called this a significant upgrade to its ability to handle incidents in Singapore waters.